Folks, you've tuned in because you know what's at stake. And let me tell you, it's huge. We're talking about the survival of the fittest, the smartest, the most prepared. Now ask yourself this. Are you ready for what's coming? Because folks, when it hits, it's not just going to knock on your door and wait for an invite. We've got countries out there, I'm talking about China and others, who are not playing games. They're on the prowl with these intelligence collection balloons. Now you might think it's all about spying, but let me throw this at you. What if I told you there's something much, much bigger at play here? We're talking electromagnetic pulses, EMPs, that could shut us down in a heartbeat. Our grid, folks, it's like a sitting duck old, weak, and just waiting for disaster. Imagine, just for a second, everything goes dark. No lights, no phones, no cars, nothing. That's the reality of an EMP attack. And guess what? Our great country, the land of the free and the home of the brave, is not as prepared as it should be. It's downright scary. So, what's the plan? How do you survive when the world as you know it flips upside down? I've got you covered with 10 crucial steps to make it through an EMP catastrophe. But I want to hear from you. Yes, you watching this. How prepared do you think you are? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And let's get this conversation started. Number one, communication plan. All right, let's break it down real simple. Because having a solid plan is everything. First off, it's crucial that you, your family, or your closest buddies, who you're teaming up with for prepping, surviving, or homesteading, know exactly where to rally up if things start to look sideways. We're talking about serious situations here, like EMP attacks or nuclear threats. It could be something happening nearby or something that affects us because it knocks out the grid or hits a large chunk of the country with an EMP. Here's the deal. Once we know where the threats landed, we need to have a spot figured out where we can all come together. This spot is where we decide whether we're going to hunker down or pack up and move to safer grounds. It's essential to have this central meetup point to hash out our plan. And let's not forget, if our phones and other tech are knocked out, we need a clear, agreed-upon spot to meet. I mean, think about it. If we suddenly lose power, chaos is going to break out. And the last thing you want is to be heading to crowded places like grocery stores or community centers. So we plan this specific spot where everyone knows to go if communication goes down. We don't want to be scrambling trying to figure out where everyone is or if they're okay because our phones or cars won't work. We need a time frame to regroup at our spot and decide our next steps. Communicating this plan and making sure everyone knows the meeting point is critical. We've got to have this figured out well before anything goes wrong. Number two, secure a water source. When we're talking about surviving any disaster, especially something as potentially devastating as an EMP attack, securing a reliable water source is as critical as having a roof over your head. Here's why. In the aftermath of an EMP, there's a real chance that the power grid could be knocked out for a long time. This means no electricity to pump water into homes, no working faucets, and before you know it, no easy access to one of life's most essential resources. Imagine, with the grid down, Water treatment plants could stop working, leading to a situation where even if you have water, it might not be safe to drink. That's why identifying and having access to a natural water source, like a river, lake, or a well, becomes a non-negotiable priority. It's not just about quenching your thirst. It's about ensuring you have water for cooking, cleaning, and maintaining hygiene. Having access isn't enough. You also need the means to purify this water. Stockpiling purification tablets or having a reliable water filter can make all the difference between staying healthy and falling sick in a situation where medical help might not be readily available. It's all about preparing for the worst while hoping for the best. So, securing a water source isn't just another item on the prep list. It's a fundamental step to ensure your survival and well-being during and after an EMP catastrophe. Number three, protecting critical electronics with Faraday cages. Here's something crucial that often slips under the radar when we're battening down the hatches for an EMP attack. Protecting our critical electronics. Sure, we all know the grid's going down, and with it, most of our modern conveniences. But what about the aftermath? How do we jumpstart recovery without some of these essential tools? This is where Faraday cages come into play, and let me tell you, they're a game changer. A Faraday cage is essentially a container made of a conductive material that can shield its contents from electromagnetic fields. Why does this matter? Well, in the event of an EMP, these fields are what's going to fry your electronics, turning them into expensive paperweights. Think about it. If you can protect key electronics like a ham radio, 
for long distance communication when the cell towers are toast, solar panel controllers, or even a simple laptop with stored survival information, you're going to be leagues ahead in the game of survival. It's not just about surviving the initial blast, but also ensuring you have the tools for communication, information access, and power management in the days, weeks, or even months that follow. Making a Faraday cage can be as simple as wrapping your items in several layers of heavy-duty aluminum foil, or for those who want a more robust solution, building a container lined with metal screening. The key here is ensuring the items are completely enclosed and that the conductive layer is grounded. Number four, emergency cash reserve. In a world that increasingly relies on digital transactions and credit systems, one critical prep that's often overlooked is having an emergency cash reserve. Think about it. If an EMP attack hits and knocks out the power grid, along with it goes the electronic banking system. No ATMs, no credit card machines, no online banking. Suddenly those pieces of plastic in your wallet aren't worth the material they're printed on. Having a stash of cash on hand isn't about reverting to old school ways for the nostalgia. It's a practical necessity. In the immediate aftermath of an EMP, the local economy, what's left of it, will likely revert to cash transactions for everything from food, water, to possibly even bartering for services. If the power outage drags on, having cash could mean the difference between securing essentials for your survival and being left out in the cold. But here's the kicker. It's not just about having cash. It's about having it in small denominations. In a crisis, making change might be a luxury people can't afford. You'll want to be able to pay exact amounts or close to it for goods and services. Storing this cash in a safe, easily accessible, yet secure location in your home or bug out location is key. This isn't your rainy day fund for spontaneous vacations. This is your lifeline in a society temporarily knocked back to cash only transactions. Preparing an emergency cash reserve is a critical, yet often neglected step in comprehensive EMP preparedness planning. Number five, manual tools and equipment. In our high-tech world, it's easy to forget how dependent we've become on power tools and machinery for everyday tasks and maintenance. However, in the aftermath of an EMP attack, the reality will hit hard that all these electrically powered conveniences are rendered useless without power. This is why having a set of manual tools and equipment is a vital yet often overlooked aspect of preparedness. Consider the essential tasks you might need to perform in a long-term survival situation, building and repairing shelters, processing firewood, gardening for food production, or even manual grain milling. These tasks become exponentially more challenging without the aid of power tools. A well-curated selection of hand tools, such as saws, hammers, screwdrivers, axes, shovels, and manual drills, can make all the difference in your ability to maintain your shelter, produce food, and keep warm. Additionally, investing in non-electric versions of kitchen gadgets can greatly enhance your quality of life post-EMP. Think manual can openers, grain mills, and even a simple mortar and pestle. These tools don't just enable you to perform essential tasks, they do so without requiring any power source other than good old-fashioned human effort. Storing these tools in an easily accessible yet secure location ensures that, even if an EMP wipes out modern conveniences, you're not left starting from scratch. Learning to use these tools effectively before you actually need them is also key. In essence, stocking up on manual tools and learning to use them isn't just about reverting to pre-electricity times out of nostalgia. It's a strategic move to ensure resilience and self-sufficiency in the face of modern vulnerabilities. Number six, physical maps and navigation tools. I can't stress enough how essential it is to keep physical maps and traditional navigation tools handy. In today's world, we're all glued to our smartphones and GPS devices, thinking they're infallible. But let's not forget, a single EMP attack could knock all that tech out cold. Suddenly, something as simple as getting from point A to point B, something we've taken for granted, turns into a Herculean task. That's why having physical, up-to-date maps of your local area, your region, and heck, even the whole country, isn't just smart. It's necessary. These maps are your lifeline to finding critical resources, scouting out safe paths away from trouble, and figuring out your game plan if you need to hightail it out of there. And it's not just about roadmaps. Topographical maps give you the lowdown on the lay of the land, where you can find water and potential spots to bunker down. Pair those maps with a good old-fashioned compass. 
and you've got a winning combo to navigate without having to rely on any fancy gadgets. Knowing how to actually use these tools, like reading a map properly, using landmarks to guide you, and figuring out which way is north without a digital compass, is a set of skills that's worth its weight in gold, especially if we ever find ourselves in a post-EMP scenario. Make sure your navigation gear is tough enough to handle whatever gets thrown at it. Go for waterproof, durable maps and compasses, and keep them somewhere you can easily get to them if you ever need to make a quick exit. Trust me, in a world where high-tech might not always be on our side, being prepared with these basics could literally be a lifesaver. Number 7. Get your food storage plan together. Now, why is this on top of the list? Because the minute we get hit by an EMP, all those grocery stores and supply lines we count on every day could be out of commission. We're not talking about going overboard here. It's about being smart and proactive to make sure you and your family have what you need when the store shelves are bare and there's no truck coming in with supplies. A solid food storage plan means you've got non-perishable items stacked up, we're looking at canned goods, dried foods, grains, beans, stuff that won't go bad anytime soon. And it's not just about having food to eat. It's about making sure that food's going to keep you healthy, offering a well-rounded diet when you can't just run out and grab fresh veggies or fruits. But hey, it's not only about throwing a bunch of cans into a closet and calling it a day. You've got to keep that stock fresh, rotating through your supplies so nothing ends up wasted. You need to know the ins and outs of storing food the right way to make it last longer. Ever think about canning your own food or maybe drying fruits and meats? Now's the time to start learning. And don't forget, variety's key here. Including some favorite snacks and treats can make a big difference when times get tough. Number 8. Stockpile seeds for a survival garden. Facing the aftermath of a catastrophic EMP attack, one of the most forward-thinking and crucial steps for ensuring long-term survival and self-sufficiency is to stockpile seeds for a survival garden. This isn't just about emergency preparedness. It's about establishing a renewable food source for times when supermarkets might as well be a thing of the past. Why emphasize seeds? They are the bedrock of sustainable food security. In a world where traditional supply chains are a distant memory, the ability to grow your own food transitions from a hobby to a critical survival skill. Plus, the act of gardening can play a huge role in maintaining morale, normalcy, and productivity amidst chaos. Selecting the right seeds is vital. Heirloom, non-GMO seeds are preferred for their open-pollinated characteristics, allowing you to save seeds from your harvests to replant next season, thus ensuring a sustainable cycle. Aim to stockpile a variety of seeds, including vegetables, fruits, herbs, and grains, tailored to your specific climate and soil conditions. Key seeds to stockpile and easy-to-grow plants. Vegetables. Focus on high-yield, nutrient-dense options like tomatoes, zucchinis, and leafy greens, spinach, kale, and lettuce. These plants are not only easy to cultivate, but also provide substantial harvests. Tomatoes and zucchinis in particular can produce abundant yields even for beginners, making them staples in a survival garden. Herbs, basil, cilantro, and parsley are excellent choices. They require minimal space, can often be grown in containers, and add essential flavors and nutrients to your diet. Herbs are also beneficial for medicinal purposes, offering natural remedies for various ailments. Fruits. Consider berries, strawberries, raspberries, and dwarf fruit trees if space allows. Berries are relatively low maintenance and provide essential vitamins. Dwarf fruit trees can offer substantial yields without the need for extensive space. Grains and legumes. Options like beans, peas, and corn can be more challenging, but are invaluable for their protein and calorie content. Beans and peas in particular are known for their ability to fix nitrogen in the soil, improving fertility for future planting seasons. Focusing on these plants can help maximize the effectiveness of your garden supporting your dietary needs with a mix of vitamins, minerals, and proteins. It's also wise to consider companion planting and crop rotation to maintain soil health and deter pests naturally. Educating yourself on gardening techniques, soil management, and natural pest control is integral. Knowing which plants are best suited to your climate, how to effectively rotate crops, and the ins and outs of companion planting can greatly enhance your garden's yield and longevity. Number 9 there's one thing that doesn't get nearly enough attention. Having a fully stocked first aid kit and all the medical supplies you could need. We're not just talking a few band-aids and alcohol pads here. 
We mean a comprehensive stash that's ready for anything. From scrapes to serious emergencies that could pop up if we're living in a world post-EMP. Here's the deal. After an EMP knocks out all our modern conveniences, getting to a doctor or pharmacy might not just be hard. It could be impossible. Those little injuries or illnesses that were no biggie before can suddenly become dangerous. Plus, with things getting dirtier and living conditions changing, there's a bigger chance of getting sick. That's why it's absolutely key to be ready to handle infections and sicknesses on your own. What should be in your top-notch first aid kit? Advanced wound care stuff. Load up on all types of bandages, gauze, medical tape, cleansers, and antibiotic creams. Think about including tools for stitching or stapling cuts if they're serious. Medicines. Pile up the common meds for pain, fevers, allergies, and the usual stomach issues. If you or anyone with you relies on prescription meds, make sure you've got enough to last through a long haul without pharmacies. Gadgets. Keep handy things like thermometers, blood pressure cuffs, and stethoscopes to keep an eye on everyone's health. Don't forget tweezers, scissors, and a magnifying glass for dealing with smaller, tricky issues. Cleanliness Supplies Staying clean is going to keep you healthy, so stock up on hand sanitizer, disinfectant wipes, and personal hygiene items. Also, think about how you'll handle sanitation, maybe with portable options or waste bags. How-to books Having detailed guides or manuals on first aid can be a real game-changer, especially if you're not a medical pro. Make sure these cover everything from basic care to the more complicated stuff you might face. Putting together this kind of kit means really thinking about what you and your group might need, including any special health issues. And don't just set it and forget it. Check your supplies regularly to make sure everything's still good to go. Number 10. Fire Starting Equipment and Skills The ability to start a fire is an often underestimated yet absolutely essential skill and resource. Imagine this. The power's out indefinitely, and with it goes the convenience of electric stoves, heaters, and light sources. In such a scenario, knowing how to start a fire is not just about staying warm. It's about cooking food, purifying water, and providing a sense of security and normalcy in the dark, uncertain times that follow an EMP event. Why is fire starting equipment so crucial? First and foremost, the immediate loss of electricity and gas lines means traditional cooking and heating methods are off the table. A reliable fire starting kit, complete with waterproof matches, lighters, ferrocerium rods, also known as ferro rods or fire steels, and tinder, can make the difference between a cooked meal and raw provisions. It's about survival, sure, but it's also about morale. There's something fundamentally comforting about gathering around a fire after a day of facing the unknown. Moreover, the ability to boil water is a game changer in situations where access to clean drinking water is compromised. A fire allows you to purify water through boiling, making it safe to drink and use for cooking. This is a critical consideration in the aftermath of an EMP, where water treatment facilities may be down and natural water sources may be your only option. But it's not just about having the tools, it's also about having the skills. Practicing fire starting techniques in various conditions, wet weather, with minimal resources, using different methods, is as important as the tools themselves. Skills like constructing an effective fire lay, understanding which materials catch fire easily, and knowing how to sustain a fire are invaluable. This knowledge ensures that when the matches run out or the lighter fluid dries up, you can still produce fire using natural materials and techniques like the bow drill or fire plow. Thank you for watching.